Hello again. If you're just uh, joining us, uh, I am Tristan Chukovsky of TZ Longsword, and I'm with Corey Winslow here visiting from Mimag. We are talking about Hima. I did actually want to um, kind of bounce off before you mentioned uh, about um, motion and, and, and stillness. Um, not too long ago, um, I released a tiny little rant video about uh, frequency modus, about mm -hmm. the constant motion um, and the, the specific reference in 3227A. Um, and that is always something that um, I've seen interpreted differently um, throughout the community. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you approach just the concept of, of frequency mm -hmm. modus? My thoughts on, on frequency modus are relatively simple. Um, 3227A and um, to a lesser extent the early the rest of the early KDF material has an emphasis on seizing the four, which is you know the offensive component. Sure, yeah, the maintaining initiative at right. all, all. And points. maintaining it. Yeah. That that is the the frequency modus part, mm -hmm. and it's it's simply attacking or counterattacking an opponent in a way that he must always defend himself mm -hmm. and never giving him an instant uh, in which to counterattack you. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, where you have to maintain your constant motion. So. To put a little bit more of a specific idea behind this, do you think that that necessitates literal constant motion? This is where I tend to see a little bit of divergence in, in my interpretation as opposed to other people's interpretation, is certainly one can attempt to maintain initiative by constantly attacking. Um, and this is actually um, a, a, a metaphor that I use for various different techniques. Um, things like um, the Noble War, for example. You know, mm -hmm. w whenever there's a reference to you know seeking the openings, you know, mm -hmm. we have the four quadrants of the human body that we're trying to um, uh, offend in one way or another. And I use the kind of metaphor of of tennis, where um, if you're actually playing to win, you're not just you know hitting the ball to the other person. I mean, that's mm -hmm. kind of like a very friendly way of playing tennis where you just want to enjoy, you know, being out in the, 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 the nice weather and you're just, you know, kind of doing some, you know, sort of, uh, you know, activity with, with, with a friend. But if you're actually competing at tennis, you're trying to always land that ball in disparate parts of the other person's court to make them scramble and un inevitably to fuck up. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the analog that I use for you know, seek, seeking the openings, but does that in a in a sword play um, environment where it's not just physical? Um, my professional tennis players might might start arguments with me now because I'm sure there's a lot of you know psychology behind tennis as well. But um, it's not just about motion. That's that's what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say. As as far as I'm concerned, it's not just about physical movement. Mm -hmm directed at these various quadrants or the various openings. Do you tend to agree or? I think that as far as we know, the author of MS3227A actually believed, ideally, mm -hmm. that you should be physically moving in an offensive manner mm -hmm. to attack your opponent's openings one after the other. Mm -hmm. I also believe that that is not necessarily possible, mm -hmm. humanly possible. Sure. Um, so I think that the idea behind it is still sound, mm -hmm. um, but not necessarily the physical physical ex execution in the way that the author of 3227A intended, mm -hmm. possibly. Um, but I, I do believe that your aim should be uh, to keep the opponent on the defensive as much as possible, mm -hmm. um, at least psychologically. Yes. So it's almost constant motion but you're trying to keep the other person in constant motion always always kind of frantically defending themselves right that doesn't necessitate the agent as it were being right in constant motion i mean we also see things like um you know failures and stuff like that which 
yes, there's an element of emotion to it too, but it's not necessarily like you know big big strikes to their completion or to just just where they're about to engage and then you s- suddenly switch to somewhere else where you can have much more of a, uh, a mind game right? rather than constantly moving because, of course, anytime you're moving, you're using energy, right? right. You're just you know, burning yourself out. So, um, and again, you know, this, this has always been my idea is that it's, it's much more of a... Um, you know, being being adept, being being mobile, mentally, mm-hmm. not being stagnant for sure. I mean, you never want to just pause. But even in stillness, I think there are ways of relative stillness. Of course, uh, I think there are still ways to force the other person to right to react and, and play into your hand. And well, play. it's quite possible that if you take the lesson of frequency modus mm-hmm. um, literally. Uh, that this was simply a beginner lesson. Mm-hmm. Um, it's what you learn how to physically perform first. Mm-hmm. And I would suggest that that <laughs> must be the case um, simply because a later lesson is the Schreckfenster. And with the Schreckfenster, which is the speaking window, which mm-hmm. is an application of long point, mm-hmm. we are told to uh, stand freely and see his business. Mm-hmm. Um, and you are told that you can wait in this guard. Wait and see, which is one of the things that so many of the source materials at the beginning tell you explicitly not to do. Never wait and see, but just strike at them, strike at them, strike at them, get them on the defensive. And again, here at the, the culmination, we have, eh. Right, and, and, and the Schreckfenster is used to kind of reiterate all of the earlier lessons, but in a more adept way. Um, you're, you're not necessarily driving the action, but you have learned enough about how to fight with the sword um, that you can act within their time, within their actions. Um, so you don't actually have to physically offend them, um, but you can allow them to come to you and catch them in their own actions, which is much more of a mental game than mm-hmm. physically assaulting them. Mm-hmm. And it saves energy, too. Right, right. You're not opening yourself up. You're safe sure. behind your sword. You're mm-hmm. safe behind the speaking window. Mm-hmm. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Um, If you haven't already, you can subscribe to both of us on our YouTube channels. And if you really like what you see, uh, please feel free to join us on our Patreon accounts as well.